Joe Manchin is a yes on Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, the senator from West Virginia has just in the last few seconds made that announcement. Uh, the Democrat from West Virginia is the first and so far only Democrat to say that he will vote for uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Not, not a surprise in any way uh, that it happened immediately after uh, is just about to be expected. Uh, West Virginia is ruby red and, uh, and now th things are as we expected they might be, Chris. Yeah, I have to say, I don't know that Joe Manchin has been a profile in political courage in all this. <laughs> he didn't uh, vote uh, to end the debate, uh, to invoke cloture today until he was sure that there were 50 votes so that he would be the 51st. He di didn't uh, announce how he was going to vote on Kavanaugh until he saw that it was already decided by Susan Collins. So he's on the, quote, right side of the issue politically for most voters in West Virginia, but he waited until he was not the swing vote. Uh, the next step is a vote in Congress, a, a full vote in the Senate, and it's our understanding that comes sometime tomorrow. Is that right? There's a lot That's of debate right. first. Uh, there's a lot of debate. There's 30 hours. Uh, only in the Senate would you cut off debate by invoking cloture, which then starts the clock <laughs> for 30 hours more of debate. But uh, it, it ended just before 11 o'clock, so we should think... And it not, may, they may, the Democrats may not take the entire 30 hours, but sometime, I think, in mid to late afternoon, sometime between 3.30 and 5 tomorrow afternoon, the Senate will vote. And unless there is some unforeseen change of mind by somebody here, it looks like it will go, I'm thinking, what, 50 to 48 uh, with, with uh, one vote missing, and that would be Steve Daines, unless he wants to fly back and make it 51 uh, 48. It's our understanding that he does not. It's his daughter's wedding day, and if they don't have to have him, he said that he'll stay out there and who can blame him. Chris, now that this is decided for all intents and purposes, let's talk about the politics of it all. What does this mean, first for one side and then for the other? Well, I've always thought that for the Democrats, as tough as it is to be to lose in the Senate in terms of the confirmation uh, of Brad Kavanaugh that it would help them in the midterms because you, you've seen all of these people on Capitol Hill, hundreds of them, 300 arrested yesterday. Uh, I think this will only ignite the feeling uh, among a lot of uh, Democrats, particularly women, that uh, the Republican Party is not sympathetic to their interests. Uh, suburban women especially, and I think that's going to empower them to go out in the polls. Now, the question had always been, which would be more helpful to Republicans, to win or lose in the Senate? Uh, I begin to think that, in fact, winning is the best thing, that had they lost, that might have dispirited the base. And you do see, just in the fight over Kavanaugh, uh, according to the polls, a real rise in enthusiasm. There'd been a big gap in intensity between Democrats, who seemed very interested in the midterms, and Republicans who did not seem so energized. But there's a lot of feeling among the Republican conservative base that Kavanaugh has not been dealt with fairly. And in a lot of the polls, you see what used to be a gap of as much as 10 or 12 points in enthusiasm is now only uh, plus two for the Democrats. We, we have a political uh, generation between now and the, and the election. That, that's obvious. But with that said, the analysts have said this vote, because of suburban, educated, white women and the, in, the energizing of them, that the House is more solid for Democrats now, and the Senate could possibly more, be more solid for Republicans. Could you explain that part of it? Yeah, I, I think that might well be true, because uh, House districts are so confined and oftentimes gerrymandered so that, that the, the, the cross-section of the cut of the pie in each individual district can be more localized and therefore you, you might see suburban women in a suburban district, obviously, or college educated people in a more upscale district, that, that they're going to turn out more. And so that's going to have more of an impact in the House. In, in a Senate race, where it's the entire state, uh, it's more a question of intensity. Midterm elections as opposed to presidential elections, people don't tend to turn out as much unless they're really energized. 2010 with the Tea Party movement and the aftermath of Obamacare, you saw Republicans really turn out. This year in the opposition to Trump, it looked like Democrats were going to turn out, but now it looks like there's a backlash by Republicans and particularly in Senate races, uh, you're beginning to see a lot of those races begin to move either towards or in favor of uh, the Republican candidates. 
Well, it's a fascinating day and a, an impressive process to come, Chris. We'll look forward to seeing Fox News Sunday this Sunday for sure.